Welcome to video three of my special relativity masterclass. In this lesson, we're going to explore one of Einstein's most striking predictions, length contraction. Just as time slows down from moving clocks, objects in motion appear to shorten along the direction of travel. This isn't an illusion or a trick of perspective. It's a real consequence of the constancy of the speed of light. To understand where this comes from, we'll use a simple but powerful thought experiment, a train, a mirror, and a flash of light. By comparing what passengers on the train see with what observers on the ground see, we'll discover why motion forces nature to contract lengths, and then we'll derive the exact formula for how this contraction works. On this slide, I wanna review the two postulates of special relativity. In the first two videos of this series, we introduced the postulates of special relativity. The first postulate states that the laws of physics are the same in every inertial reference frame. The second postulate tells us that the speed of light is always the same, no matter how fast the source or the observer is moving, as long as the motion is at a constant velocity. This will play a central role in today's presentation as we use it to understand and derive the phenomenon of length contraction. In this animation, there's a train, and this T represents an observer who's riding on the train. And then there's also an observer on the ground, and there's a tree on the ground. Imagine you're riding inside a high-speed train moving at 88% the speed of light. You wanna measure the train's length. To do this, you place a clock at the rear of the train, a mirror at the front, and send a flash of light forward. The light races to the front, reflects off the mirror and returns back to your clock. The animation is set up so time stops when the light gets to the front of the train. I'll hit resume. Now the light bounces off the mirror and it goes to the back of the train. For this example, the clock at the back now reads two seconds. By timing the round trip and using the constancy of the speed of light, you can calculate the train's length from the simple relation distance equals speed times time. The distance the light traveled is 2L. It's twice the length of the train. The speed of light is a law of physics. It's C, 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. And the time is 2 seconds. This allows an observer on the train to calculate the length of the train. I also want to point out that from the perspective of the observer on the train, the train itself is at rest. It's the ground, the trees, and everything outside rushing backwards at negative 88.6% the speed of light. AcePhysics.org. Math and physics tutoring with Dr. Hudis. Now imagine you're standing on the ground watching the train rush past at 88.6% the speed of light. To measure the length, you send a flash of light from the rear towards the front. Because the front is moving away, the forward trip takes longer. When the light reflects back, the rear is moving toward it, so the return trip is quicker. The light started from the rear of the train, and this is the distance the light traveled until it reached the front of the train. This is the distance the train moved, and L is the length of the train as measured by an observer on the ground. The light reflects off the mirror at the front of the train and moves the short distance until it gets to the back of the train. The back of the train moved towards the light, and this was the distance that the back of the train moved, and this distance L is the same length of the train as measured by an observer on the ground. In this example, when the train is moving at 88.6% the speed of light, the time for the light to move forward is 3.7 seconds, and the time for the light to move backwards is only 0.26 seconds. By combining these times and using the constancy of the speed of light, you can calculate the train's length as measured on the ground. That length comes out shorter than the proper length on board. This is length contraction. In this example, the length of the train as measured by someone on the ground is half as long as the length of the train as measured by someone riding with the train. The light travels this distance forward and this small distance backwards. This is far more than twice the train's length in total. That's the key idea. It spends much longer chasing the front than it does returning to the rear. This imbalance highlights why motion changes the way distances are measured, and it helps motivate the need for length contraction. Here we have a really important thought experiment that shows why length contraction is necessary in reality. I'll hit play, and at the top, you see two photons bouncing inside an L-shaped ship, one moving vertically, the other moving horizontally. Inside the ship, both photons always meet back at the corner at the same exact time. That's what the people on the ship observe, and their observations must always be consistent with the law of physics. Now look at the bottom point of view. I'm going to disable length contraction. On the bottom is the same ship, 
but seen from an outside observer's frame, where the ship is moving to the right at 86% the speed of light. Here's the puzzle. If we don't include length contraction, the horizontal distance the photon travels forward and backwards has farther to go, while the vertical photon has the same path as before. The two photons no longer arrive at the corner together. Without length contraction, this photon would arrive at the corner, and this photon doesn't. That would directly contradict what the passenger traveling with the ship sees. Einstein's theory doesn't allow contradictions like this. To fix it, nature enforces length contraction. The horizontal arm of the ship gets shorter in the moving frame. The adjustment keeps the two photons perfectly synchronized, so both ship's passenger and the outside observer agree on the outcome. The photons reunite at the corner at the same time. Notice something subtle. The photons themselves always travel at the same speed, the speed of light. The illusion that one seems slower or faster comes from the fact that the ship is moving underneath them. Without length contraction, the story falls apart. With length contraction, the laws of physics remain consistent for every observer. So the situation beautifully demonstrates why length contraction is not just a strange idea, but a necessary feature of reality. Without it, relativity would collapse into contradictions. With it, the universe makes sense again. On this slide, I derive the length contraction equation. First, consider the light traveling from the back of the train to the front of the train. This is in the reference frame of the ground observer who's standing on the ground and sees the train moving past him. In the ground frame, the light must cover not only the length of the train, but also the extra distance the front of the train moves forward during that time. So the time for the light to move forward from the rear of the train to the final position of the front of the train is equal to length plus the velocity of the train times delta t forward divided by the speed of light. Next, consider the light traveling from the front of the train to the back of the train. In this case, the rear of the train is moving forward towards the oncoming light. So the light has to cover the train's length minus the distance the rear moves forward in that time. You divide by the speed of light, and this is the change in time backwards. This is how much time it takes for the light to go backwards. So we can do some simple algebra, rearrange these two conditions, and solve for the forward trip time and the backward trip time. Adding these two times together gives the total round trip of the light pulse as measured in the ground frame. This expression simplifies through algebra to twice the train's length in the ground frame, that's the contracted length, divided by the speed of light multiplied by gamma squared, where gamma is the Lorentz factor, one over the square root of one minus v squared over c squared. At this point, we already know from the light clock argument that time runs slower for a moving observer. I derived this result in the previous video. That result can be applied here without rederiving it. It's independent of this discussion. Delta T0 is the proper time and L0 is the proper length. This is the time as measured by someone who's riding on the train, and this is the length as measured by someone who's riding on the train. The velocity of light times the time measured on the train equals 2L0, and therefore the proper time or the time that somebody on the train measures for the light to go from the rear of the train to the front of the train and back to the rear of the train is 2L0 divided by C. From time dilation, the total time measured on the ground must equal gamma times the proper time measured on the train. This is the time dilation formula. It was derived in the previous video. Now, we just show that the total time is equal to 2L over C times gamma squared, where L is the length that somebody on the ground measures the train to be. So I can replace the total time with this formula. And this has to equal to gamma times the proper time, where the proper time is this formula. Setting these two results equal leads directly to the formula for length contraction. The length of the moving train, as measured from the ground, is shorter than the proper length measured on board. To conclude the video, I'll define proper length and then review the formula for length contraction. Proper length is the length of an object measured in the frame where the object is at rest. It is the true or maximum length, because when the object is moving relative to you, special relativity says you will measure it as shorter. Proper length is what you would get if you grabbed a ruler and measured the object while traveling along with it. Just as proper time is the shortest time between two events, proper length is the longest length of an object, measured only in its rest frame. The length of an object in motion is equal to its proper length multiplied by the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. L equals L naught over gamma. AcePhysics.org Math and Physics Tutoring with Dr. H AcePhysics.org Math and Physics Tutoring with Dr. Hudis.